Hallelujah! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah! The Lord be with you and also with me. Welcome to Mudalif Nature Reserve. We're going to be celebrating the sixth Sunday of Easter here this morning. I will be using a service that was compiled by Reverend Tim Gray of the Johannesburg Anglican Eco-Spiritual Initiative in 2006. Most high and all-powerful, all good Lord, all praise is yours, all glory, all honor, and all blessing. To you alone, most high, do they belong. No mortal lips are worthy to pronounce your name. All praise be yours, my Lord, through all that you have made. And first, my Lord, brother, son, who brings the day and light you give to us through him. How beautiful is he, how radiant in all his splendor. Of you, most high, he bears the light. All praise be yours, my Lord, through brothers, wind and air. And fair and stormy, all the weather's mood, by which you cherish all that you have made. All praise be yours, my Lord, through sister water, so useful, lowly, precious and pure. All praise be yours, my Lord, through brother fire 
Through him you brighten up the night. How beautiful is he, how gay, full of power and strength. All praise be yours, my Lord, through Sister Earth, our Mother, who feeds us in her sovereignty and produces various fruits with coloured flowers and herbs. All praise be yours, my Lord, through those who grant pardon, for love of you, through those who endure sickness and trial. Happy are those who endure in peace by you, most high they will be crowned. Praise and bless my Lord and give him thanks and serve him with great humility. Amen. O Christ, we need your help, deeply we need. Our good world draws corruption from our breath. As we do to ourselves, so we give death in stupid carelessness or ugly greed. The meadows and the fields grow cancerous with yields of chemical arrogance. The great whales sink below a massive garbage flow and cease their mating dance. The small birds that should sing the newness of each spring fall still at death's advance. All creatures in the world made victims to our greed are caught by death and whirled past any joy or need. O Christ, we pray you, make us truly see the grievous wounds which our pride has given to a world once cleanly fed. Help us, O Christ. Help us to truly share as much reverence for all the little living things as we do with the great, so that we may know our place in your creation. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon our sins and set us free from them. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you reveal yourself in love. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Isi fundo ku izenzo zaba posti. Isa kloko se shumi enes kreni. Ivesi yama shumi amabini anesbili. We maike upaulosi esa zulini se arioka wako wati. Madoda ase adeni. Diabona kuba ezdueni zonke ni nganisile ukutlone na iztiku. Kuba anditeli amba andisinga singa. Izi ndo eni zikone na ayo. Ndafumana nesi bingelelo egu palo kuso kwa tiwa. Ngonga ziwayo utiku. Loo ngoko ni mkone na ayo ni ngamazi. Dinazisa yena mna. Utiko yena owenza ilabati. Nendo zonke ezikulo. Loo e ingo sinje yezu luno mklaba. Agathali zitempile nizenzwe ngeza andla. Kananjalo aga piliswa zizanja za bandu. Ngoko swelendo. Inguye nje oba nika ubomi. Numpefumlo na zozonke izindu. Kanjalo wazenza nga kazinye zonke inklanga za bandu. Uguma zime pezu kwa uonke umklaba. Emisa ama klasha abegwe ngenga enga pambili. Nemida yoku magwazo. 
ukuze bayifune inkosi ukuba kambe bangaphutha phutha bayifumani nakuba inge kude kude sonke singabanye kuba kuyo sihleli siyashukuma sikho njengokuba nembongi ezithile zenu zichilo ukuthi kuba nathi siyinzala yayo siyinzala bathiqo nje akusifanele ukuba sibe ubuthiqo obu bufana negolide ne silver nelinye into eqinqwe ngobuncinci nangendlu yomuntu lo maxesha ke ngoko okungazi uthiqo wawayeka ngabunye kungoko uyala abantu bonke ezindaweni zonke ukuba baguqupe ngokuba emise umhla azakuligweba ngawo elimileyo ngobulungisa ngendoda awayimisayo abanike bonke ukholo ngokuyivusa kwabafileyo liveni ilizwi lenkosi nakubulele kuthixo Salome ya masima magataro le bogataro dimana ya borobedi go fitla go ya soma mabedi Psalm 66 reading from verse 8 to 20 O ona yang me wa ya rona bophilo o sa leseletse dinawo tsa rona go thekela go nne wena modimo o re wari sekisa jaka go itsekisiwa selefera o re tsentse mo lotloeng wa baya morwalo o imelang mo dinokeng tsa rona wa lesa bapalami ba re gata ditlhogo ra tsena mo molilong le mo metsing mme re ntsheditswe kwa go leng letlotlo ke tla tsena mo ntlong ya gago ka ditlhabelo tsa phiso ke tla go dira faletsa maikano a ale le melami le a boletseng a molomo wa me o buileng ke le motlalelong ke tla go tlisetsa ditlhabelo tsa phiso tsa dinku tse dinonneng dina le mosi wa ditlhabelo tsa pheleho ke tla go direla ka dikhomo le dipoko tlang lo retseng lona lotlhe ba lo boifang modimo ke le bolella se o diretseng moya wa me ke khotse kwa go one ka molomo pako e leng mo le limeng la me fang ka bo ke a kantse boikepo jwa pelo ya me morena a ka ba a sa nkutla me ruri modimo o nkutluile wa tlhokomela lentswe la thapelo ya me a go ba kwe modimo o se ka nwa la thapelo ya me le e seng go ntima bopelo tlhomogi jwa ona khalelo go rara le go morwa le go moya o bitshepo jaka ene le motsim le gong le jana metla nna ka metla amen
Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, beginning at the 15th verse. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, who will stay with you forever. He is the Spirit who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him because it cannot see him or know him. But you know him, because he remains with you and is in you. When I go, you will not be left all alone. I will come back to you. In a little while, the world will see me no more, but you will see me. And because I live, you also will live. When that day comes, you will know that I am in my Father, and that you are in me, just as I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. My Father will love those who love me. I too will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now to start the sermon, we will have a few inserts to give background that will illustrate some of the points that I will So here we are on my veranda at Mudalif, looking down towards the grassland. And you will be shown another picture which shows how this looked in November last year. Because in November last year we had an opportunity to put a fire through the grass. And that was indeed the third season or the third year in a row in which this grass had been burnt. Now I'm going to go down there because at the moment you can't really get an idea of just how tall the grass is. So down the stairs, they're a bit steep. <coughs> so here we are approaching this grassland, as I said we would. And as I get closer and I'm holding the camera up at the level of my eye, you will see that most of the grass is as tall as me, or indeed even slightly taller. So it's over two meters tall, some of it, and it's grown like this in six months since there was a fire that went through and cleared it down to ground level. As we look back towards my house, you'll see a tall tree there. That's Grevillea robusta. It's from Australia. It's a member of the Proteaceae family. And it was planted in, a, there was a group of seven there that were planted by an owner a long time ago as a windbreak. And as we pan round to this side, you'll see that sticking out the top of the vegetation, there are a number of tall trees. And once again, those are the Grevillea robusta. Now, some of these might have been planted as a windbreak because apparently that owner used to have a vegetable patch here where we're standing at the moment. And so he might have planted them as a windbreak for that. But what has happened is that they have now invaded all over the farm. And many, many places where you go where these trees should not occur, they are now present um, and they are invading some of the grassland. And once they get over a certain age, fire can't impact them in the grassland. When they're still young, the fire does knock them back in the grassland. As I said earlier, we have tried to burn in this area in successive years. And in, with the cooler fire, each year the fire has eaten a little bit or a little bit into the woodland and the bush. As far as I can establish, this area was originally grassland. And so that's what we are trying to return it to. And one of our big problems is that it is infested in lantana. With lantana, there you can see a lantana plant. There's another lantana plant. In this particular area that we're looking at, there are skeletons of trees, 
but also many, many skeletons of lantana. And this was absolutely choked with lantana. And the hot fire that we managed to get go through here in November has knocked a lot of it back. And so we now have a lot of grass coming through in the more open areas and where the fire was hot, very hot, you can see we've still, and where there was little grass before, you can see that we now have some bare areas. But those will recover and what we will do is to put through another fire uh, on a regular basis and that will help to keep this area open and it will uh, deal with these lantana if we haven't treated them with herbicide before then. So it's a very convenient way of trying to get rid of a very uh, large pest in the area which is the lantana. There is a little grevillea. This is one that was chopped off, poisoned uh, two years, three years ago, two years ago when we were doing control of grevillea in the areas that were previously disturbed by mining and you'll see that it has now re-sprouted and so it will need to be retreated. Certainly a lot smaller than it was originally but I'm rather disappointed that it has bounced back. Here we are at the interface of grassland and woodland. You can see that we've got grassland and in amongst it there are some bush clumps and then to this side the woodland is a bit more solid than uh, lower down. In the grassland you will often find some Diaspirus whiteiana and there's one that I'm going up to here. You can see it growing as a little shrub that re sprouts from the ground after fire but once it is in the woodland and gets away from fire you can see that this one here has grown up to about three meters tall so it's one that grows both in the woodland and in the grassland and reproduces in both and then as we go over here we can see this forea this is forea rochettiana otherwise known as or it was known as Forea speciosa, which means the beautiful one. And you can see that it has a thick bark with deep fissures in it, and this tells us that it is a tree that is tolerant of fire, which in turn tells us that this area, which now is pretty much woodland, would formerly have been grassland. You can see in the understory there is some grass, and there are various other plants that belong in the grassland that are growing in the understory of this woodland. For instance, there's a Gerbera. And <clears throat> what will happen now is if we manage to keep burning and keep burning, the fire will eat its way into here and it will gradually allow the grass to spread and once more for this to become grassland. So what we're seeing here very clearly is an interconnectedness between the woodland and the grassland. The boundary is not definite, it keeps moving um, as you get more or less fire in the area and um, the difficulty with the woody vegetation taken o taking over is apparently stimulated by the presence of high levels of carbon dioxide which favor the woody vegetation over the grass and so that is helping the woody vegetation to encroach into more and more grassland and that's another contributor to grassland being one of the most endangered kinds of vegetation that we get uh, in our country. The readings for today spoke to me of three themes. The first is from our psalm. The psalm speaks about the difficulties that people are experiencing. And verse 10 says, You have put us to the test, God. As silver is purified by fire, so you have tested us. And this spoke to me of the important roles that fire plays in grassland. Fire releases nutrients that are bound up in old plant material and some of those nutrients go back into the ground 
to energize the next season's growth. Fires, if they are hot enough, will remove or thin out indigenous bush encroachers and will clear alien invader plants. And fire also stimulates plants and other organisms, indirectly through the nutrient release, but also directly. Dormancy in some seeds is broken by heat and in some is broken by the chemicals in smoke and the underground woody rootstocks of grassland plants respond to fire with new and invigorated growth. They then flower synchronously and abundantly. They attract pollinators more effectively and there is a higher rate of seed set and investment in the next generation. In seasons after a, fire, after a winter with no fire, the grassland forbs struggle for nutrients because they're locked up in the old tissue above the ground. And they struggle for light because the grass is often taller than them. And consequently they flower erratically, they do not attract as many pollinators, and fruit and seed set is likely to be lower. Now as our psalm describes, we go through tough times in our lives. And those may be losses of different kinds. For instance, they may be bereavements, possibly the breakup of a relationship or a divorce. It may be illness or being affected by crime. For some, the restrictions imposed by the lockdown and now stage four are the equivalent of being tested by fire. Sometimes the fire is some or other very tough life lesson that we have to learn. And those tough times or fires affect all of us. Some fires might be brought on by irresponsible action on our own behalf, but many occur due to circumstances that are quite beyond our control. Now what we can do is let a fire become the controlling force in our lives for too long, or Alternatively, what we could do is to do the appropriate grieving, it is appropriate to grieve, and then see the opportunities that the fires present. They give us a chance to slow down, a chance to rest, a chance to re-evaluate priorities, attitudes, and actions. And they provide an opportunity to see what the stumbling blocks may be in our life as we are living it, and what the issues are that we may need to remove from our lives. Now having decided what needs to be removed, there can be great benefit in doing it decisively. Just like a hot fire acts on bush encroachment and alien invasion in a grassland. I acquired Mudalif about five years ago. I've been aware of the need to get rid of the Grevillea robusta trees since then. I decided that I would try to get some benefit out of them rather than just cutting them down and using them for firewood. But what is needed to do that is access to a sawmilling machine. The seven trees near my house might have made that viable, but someone heard me say that I needed to remove them and thought he was doing me a big favor when he cut six of them down and sawed them into sections of about 40 centimeters long. So they are now quite useless for making planks. Most of the other Grevillea trees are either not big enough to make planks or they are in areas that are very difficult to access, let alone remove the logs or take a milling machine. So now, four years later, the trees are slightly bigger, and they've dropped many more seeds all over the farm, and I keep finding more and more seedlings that will need to be controlled. If I'd got someone to come and chop them all down and take them for firewood five years ago, I would now have a much smaller problem to overcome. So in this case, trying to be strategic about removing them has not served. The second theme came from our Gospel. 
In verse 17, Jesus says, He is the Spirit who reveals the truth about God. But you know Him because He remains with you and is in you. And then in verse 20, Jesus says, When that day comes, you will know that I am in my Father and that you are in me, just as I am in you. And this speaks to me about interconnectedness. I showed you how the grassland is interconnected with the woodland. There are grassland forbs in the woodland, and many of the trees in the woodland grow as small bushes in the grassland. The specialized grassland trees now survive in the woodland surrounded by bushes and trees. Successive fires will push the woodland back and the grassland will expand again. But if fire is withheld, especially with the effects of, <clears throat> the effects of increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the woodland will expand into the grassland again. So the boundary is not clearly defined, and the woodland and grassland are interconnected. That then is in <coughs> illustrating interconnectedness on a fine scale. But the influence of increasing levels of carbon dioxide illustrate how there is interconnectedness on a much wider scale, and how what we do in our cities can affect what happens in our natural areas as well. And I think a very vivid illustration of just how interconnected things in the world actually are would be the spread of COVID-19, its effects and the preventative actions that have had to be taken. Now one of the biggest blocks to appropriate reverence for creation or care for the environment is compartmentalization where we think that what we do on one piece of land may not affect what happens on another. Or what we do in a city may not affect what happens in the bush where we love to go for our holidays. But in reality, everything is interconnected and our actions may have effects in very surprising places. My third theme comes from our Acts reading and is a favorite of mine. In verse 24, Paul says to the Athenians, God who made the world and everything in it is Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples made by human hands. And there are two points I would like to make from this. Firstly, many humans feel connected to God in the temples made by God where they can see mountains and rivers, waterfalls, trees or beautiful flowers in the grassland. For them, cities and walls of buildings, including the walls of the church, may seem to cut them off from God. Even if they cannot be in the wilderness all the time, they need some time in the wilderness for them to connect to God. And besides anything else, being in a wilderness can help us to realize how small and how vulnerable but of course we do need to balance this with the need to be part of a community where we love and are loved, where we contribute to the well-being of others and they contribute to our well-being in many different ways. Secondly, sometimes when we think of God living in temples or churches made by human hands, we can be tempted to think that we need to be in a church to communicate with and this is just not true. God listens to us wherever we are. Or sometimes we can be tempted to put God in a convenient box called the church building. We think we must behave in a particular way when in a church, but we can behave any way we like when elsewhere. But that does not fit with how Paul described God to the Athenians. Church buildings do have very important roles as meeting places, and they have architecture, furnishings, equipment, and images that can assist us in worship and in our understanding of God. But we must not be tempted to think 
that God's presence is limited to church building. I conclude with some questions. Maybe there are one or two of them on which you might like to reflect. Do you see the tough times in your life as hardship that keeps you away from a predictable routine? Do you perhaps see those tough times as punishment? May there be a different way of looking at them. Do you have stumbling blocks in your life? Do you have the discipline to remove them gradually? Or may the equivalent of a very hot felt fire be a better way to deal with them in your life? Do you perhaps compartmentalize various aspects of your life? And if you do, does that serve you well emotionally? Or does it serve you well spiritually? And may it be more helpful to see the interconnectedness of everything that makes you the person you are. And have you to any extent perhaps put God in a convenient building? Do you need to set God free to work in your life? And do you perhaps need to make sufficient time to commune with God in the incredibly beautiful and awe-inspiring cathedrals that God has built? Amen. We say the creed of God and creation. I believe in God, the creator of the universe. I believe in the Son, Jesus Christ, who came that all may have abundant life. I believe in the Spirit who gifts and empowers and makes the presence of the Trinity known on earth and among all living people and things. I believe that all living things and all creatures on earth, under the earth, in the air and in the sea, are made by God. I believe that God saw that they were good, and God delights in them, their variety, their usefulness, and their roles in the maintenance of this planet. I believe in the dominion of human beings and the responsibility given to all by God, so that all creatures may fulfill God's intended purpose within the kingdom of heaven here on earth, in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray in thanksgiving for Mother Earth, in whom all life is rooted, for Brother Sun, whose energy radiates life, for Sister Water, who natures and revives us, and co-creatures with whom we live and for whom we are called to till and keep this garden. All-powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love, that we may protect life and its beauty. Fill us with peace, that we may live as sisters and, and brothers, harming no one. O oh God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not to prey on it that we may soar beauty and not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only to gain at the expense of the poor and of the earth. Teach us to discover the worth in each and everything, to be filled with awe and to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. In the wake of the COVID-19 uh, global pandemic, hear our cries of compassion and heal our world and all the creatures. Inspire our hearts with the holy imagination to rise freed from the demands to produce and consume, to imagine a just and sustainable way of living where all have enough 
and all may be restored. We thank you for being with us each and every day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love, and peace. Creative The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Blessed are you, strong and faithful God. All your works, the height and the depth, echo the silent music of your praise. In the beginning your word summoned light, night withdrew and creation dawned. As ages passed unseen, waters gathered on the face of the earth, and life appeared. When time had at last grown full and the earth had ripened into abundance, you created in your own image humankind. You gave us breath and speech that the whole creation might find a voice to sing your praise. Therefore, with all the powers of heaven and earth, we chant the ageless hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. How wonderful are the works of your hands, O Lord. As a mother hen tenderly gathers her chicks, so you embraced a people as your own and filled them with longing for a peace that would last and a justice that would never fail. Through countless generations, your people hungered for the bread of freedom. From them you raised up Jesus, the living bread, in whom the ancient hungers were satisfied. He healed the sick, though he himself would suffer. He offered life to sinners through death. <clears throat> he offered life to sinners, though death would hunt him down. With love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross and surrendered his spirit to you, Father. Father, let your Holy Spirit move in power over us and over our earthly gifts of bread and wine, that they may become to us the body and blood of Christ. On the night before he met with death, Jesus came to a table with those he loved. He took the loaf and praised you. God of all creation, he broke it among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given for you.
when supper was ended, he poured a final cup and blessed you, God of all creation. He passed the cup among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we commemorate Jesus, your Son, as we present before you his sacrifice. Death could not bind him, for you raised him up in the spirit of holiness and exalted him as Lord of creation. May his coming in glory find us ever watchful in prayer, strong in love, and faithful to the breaking of the bread. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith, dying you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Rejoicing in the Holy Spirit, your whole church offers you thanks and praise. In oneness with all creation, we sing your praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We say the environmental Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, you are also at home in the air, soil, forests and oceans. Hallowed be your name by the care we take of your creation. Your kingdom come, all that you see is good. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, your will to till and care. Give us this day our daily bread, that all may have sufficient to live in life in fullness. Forgive us our sins our greed, our exploitation, our lack of concern for other species and for future generations. As we forgive those who sin against us by reconciliation with justice and peace. Save us from the time of trial, the temptation to equate dominion with exploitation and deliver us from evil the evil of destroying your gift of creation for the kingdom, yours, Lord, not ours, the power and the glory in the cross and the resurrection are yours now and forever. You were the beginning and you are the end. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We, who are many, are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own right that in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to, to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, 
and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith. body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. God's mercy endures forever. God, delight, source of all joy, thank you for making us part of the web of life, depending on the rhythms and the fruits of the earth for our existence. Help us to be wholly present to you, now in this place where our feet are on the ground, and where we are surrounded by creation skips from concrete to clouds. Amen. We pray the prayer of commitment. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. We pray for Africa. God bless Africa. Protect her children. Transform our leaders. Heal our communities. Restore our dignity and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love and those for whom you pray, this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.